Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Mark Thinness, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to crochet a Tunisian honeycomb stitch. So let's get started. Alright, so we're going to be using the honeycomb stitch in the next two tutorials. So on the tutorial posting this Thursday and the tutorial posting next Thursday. So be sure to practice this. But we're going to begin with a slip knot. So just wrap the yarn around two fingers, insert your hook into that loop, grab the yarn back here, and pull it through the loop. And then just tighten your knot by pulling on the two threads at the bottom. So our initial chain is just going to be worked in any odd number. So wrap the yarn around your hook, pull this top loop through the bottom loop, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm going to stop here at eleven. So I changed ele chained eleven. And now we're going to start casting on. So insert your hook into the next stitch. So it's the second stitch from your hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Go into the next one. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So just cast on one loop for every stitch of the chain. There we go. And once you've cast on, we're going to work a return pass. And you're going to work just a regular return pass in all of your rows. So yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So once you are left with just one loop on your hook, you've completed your foundation row. Now for the next few rows, we're going to alternate between a Tunisian simple stitch and a purl stitch. So begin on the first one, we're going to work a purl stitch into this first uh, vertical stitch. So remember that when you're working on Tunisian crochet, you usually skip the very first vertical stitch because you've already have it cast on onto your hook. So I will refer to this second vertical post as our first stitch. So to work a purl stitch, you're going to reverse yarn over. So pull your yarn in front of your hook and then just hold it down with your index finger. You're going to insert your hook into the top loop of that first stitch. And then you release your yarn and pull it around so that it goes under the loop and behind your hook. And then you yarn over. So this is a regular yarn over where you pass the yarn right behind the hook. And you're going to pull through one loop. So that's a purl. The next stitch is going to be a Tunisian simple stitch. So all you're going to do is you insert your hook behind that top loop, yarn over, and you pull up a loop. And that's it. The next one is a purl stitch. So we reverse yarn over. So we have the yarn in front of our hook. Hold that down with your index finger. And you're going to insert your, your hook into that top loop of the stitch. Release your yarn and loop it under that loop that you have on your hook and behind the hook. And now you regular yarn over. So yarn over and pull yeah, that um, your yarn right behind your hook. You're going to pull that top loop through this one loop, like so. So that was a purl. The next one is a Tunisian simple stitch. So just insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And then we purl. So reverse yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, release our yarn, pull it under and behind our hook, yarn over and pull through one loop. Tunisian simple stitch. And then we purl. And then simple stitch. And then purl. And then we're just going to stitch here in this last stitch of our row. So I'm just going to insert my hook right here behind those last two loops. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So we've cast on. 
And now you work a return pass. So yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until you are left with just one loop on your hook. And the next row, it's gonna be worked very similar, uh, very similarly, excuse me, to this row, except that we're going to invert the stitches. So we're gonna switch them out. So now the last row, we worked a purl stitch. Now for this row, we're gonna work a Tunisian simple stitch. So every purl that you stitched in the last row is gonna become a Tunisian simple stitch in this row. So we're gonna begin with a Tunisian simple stitch in that first stitch of the row. In the next stitch, we're gonna work a purl. And then you work a Tunisian simple stitch and then a purl. If you're not sure where to start or what stitch you're gonna be working on, let's look at these two stitches. If you see this little knot, that means in the previous row you worked a purl. So that means that in this row, you're gonna work a Tunisian simple stitch. If the stitch is longer, like this one, this is a Tunisian simple stitch, which means that in this row, we're gonna work a purl stitch. So since this one has the knot at the bottom, we're gonna work a Tunisian simple stitch. This is a long stitch, so we're gonna work a purl. So here's a short little stitch with a knot at the bottom. That means we're gonna work a Tunisian simple stitch. And then we're gonna work a purl. We have a Tunisian simple stitch. And then in this last one, we're just gonna insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and we've cast on. So now we just complete a return pass. So those are the two rows you are gonna repeat over and over again to create the honeycomb stitch. So we'll go over this row again, and we'll do a little bit more quickly. So there we go. This first stitch is gonna be a purl. So we're gonna begin and end the row in a purl stitch. So we have purl, simple stitch, purl, simple stitch, purl, simple stitch, purl, simple stitch, and then we end in a purl. And then we have that very last stitch of the row. And you work a return pass. In the next row, we're gonna begin with a simple stitch. So we're gonna begin and end the row in a simple stitch. This is not counting the very, very last stitch of the row and that very, very first stitch that we skip because those are just the ending stitches that are gonna create a nice, clean little border. So the design begins on that second vertical stitch, which I call that first stitch, and then the second to last stitch. That way you're left with a nice, clean border. So I'll work a few more rows of this just just to show you what it looks like once you've finished, and then we're gonna work a bind off. So I worked a few more rows of this stitch. Now you can really start to see the honeycomb pattern. We're gonna work on a bind off. So the bind off is gonna close off these big stitches here up at the top. So for this one, we're gonna work a slip stitch into every one of the stitches of the row. So you're going to insert your hook in between both threads of this stitch. So remember to always skip this very first vertical stitch and go into the second one. And you've got this back loop and the front one. Insert your hook right between both of those. So right in the middle of those. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to pull this top loop through this bottom loop. And you're going to repeat in the next stitch. So insert your hook in between both threads right here that make up that stitch, go all the way to the back, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then slip stitch. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, slip stitch. So I'll finish these real quick just to show you what it's gonna look like once you've done your bind off. 
you're going to want to include that very last stitch of the row as well. So this one right here at the end. And then just to end the stitch, I normally end with the chain one. And that will make a nice little knot here at the end. And there you go. If you've enjoyed today's tutorial, don't forget to subscribe because I post videos every week. If you want to see more of my work, you can also follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again in the next tutorial.